kids learn it too. How does lightning strike? A dance of power so bright. Nature's electrifying fury from the clouds it ignites. How does lightning strike? A dance of power so bright. Let's see how a flash of lightning is created with such might. What is lightning? Well, it's electricity. But what creates this phenomenon? Well, let's learn and see. Electricity involves tiny particles. These are found in storm clouds. Let's see how they are pulled. Some particles have a positive charge and other particles have a negative charge. The two opposite charges pull towards one another, just like the north and south ends of a magnet, I'm sure. How does lightning strike? It's a power so bright, nature's electrifying fury from the clouds it ignites. How does lightning strike? A dance of power so bright. Let's see how a flash of lightning is created with such might. Within a storm cloud, there are turbulent winds that separate the positive and negative particles within. Positive particles are lighter, so they do rise as the When the negative charges move from the cloud towards the ground, this is called a step leader. This is where it is found. On the ground, an upward leader does form from the ground as the positive charges move up, searching for negative charges hanging around. How does lightning strike? A dance of power so bright, nature's electrifying fury from the clouds it ignites. How does lightning strike? A of power so bright let's see how a flash of lightning is created with such might when the step leader and the upward leader finally meet it creates a path for the large electrical current you see this current created by this event you just learned about is the thing we call lightning without any doubt how does lightning strike a dance of power so bright Nature's electrifying fury from the clouds it ignites. How does lightning strike? A dance of power so bright. Let's see how a flash of lightning is created with such might. This is a hurricane. When hurricanes and typhoons form, they are essentially the same type of storm. The difference is their geographical locations. Let's look at both to answer all these basic questions. A hurricane is a tropical cyclone that form over the Atlantic Ocean when they're blown. Hurricanes also form when they are in motion. This is a hurricane and here's a typhoon Both produce strong winds What's the difference between the two? A typhoon's a tropical cyclone when in motion Mainly forming in the northwestern Pacific Ocean Impacting countries in the western Pacific on their run The Philippines, Japan, China and Southeast Asian nations This is a hurricane What is anthropogenic space weather? We shall see. These are environmental pollutants from human activity. Space weather refers to Earth's surrounding. Near space, humans have studied plasma. 
In this place, these plasma blasts can effect satellites in space and power grids on Earth, disturbing the human race. But when high altitude nuclear tests were conducted during the Cold War by the US and Soviet Union in 58 to 62 for sure, these nuclear tests detonated explosives at heights of 16 to 250 miles above the Earth's surface. So bright, the first blast wave expelled an expanding fireball of plasma. A hot gas of electrically charged particles that humans saw Creating geomagnetic disturbances Distorting Earth's magnetic field lines Many satellites near this explosions failed at that time These tests even created artificial radiation belts so unique These artificially trapped charged particles remain for weeks When these high altitude nuclear explosions did ignite Aurora could be seen at the equator what a sight Utility grids in Hawaii Were strained when these tests did ignite And in space above the explosion Affected some satellites These high altitude explosions Are like having millions of lightning strikes Hit the US in less than one second Man what a fright This would cause havoc in every aspect Of civilized life And its effect would mimic the largest Solar storms with strike What is anthropogenic space weather We shall see These are environmental Mental pollutants from human activity. Sleep versus snow versus hail. Let's look at what makes them different with this frozen tail. Sleep, snow, and hail are forms of frozen water precipitation, but each is distinct when it comes to its formation. Sleep consists of small ice pellets or frozen raindrops that fall. Let's look at what makes them different with this frozen tail. Snow is a type of frozen water that forms when water vapor in the atmosphere condenses directly into ice crystals, I'm sure. These ice crystals then join together to form snowflakes. Each flake is a unique structure piling like icing on a cake. Hail are balls of ice that form within severe thunderstorms with strong updrafts and this is how they are formed. These updrafts carry Look at what makes them different with this frozen tail. These are four classic types of earth volcanoes. Let this knowledge flow while your mind is blown. These four classic types of volcanoes are named by the USGS cinder cones, composite and shield volcanoes, and lava domes. I do confess. The simplest type of volcano is the cinder cone. Let's see how they form and how they grow. The cinder cone summit has a bowl shaped crater atop its ascent, built from particles and blobs of lava ejected from its single vent. Cinder cones rarely get taller than six to nine hundred feet, and they have rocky slopes that are pretty steep. There are numerous cinder cones in North America's west and other parts of the world in volcanic terrains I do attest Composite volcanoes are usually thousands of feet tall And may rise to 8,000 feet above their bases as they sprawl Their snow-covered peaks are symmetrical cones that are steep-sided Composed of lava flows, mud flow, and pyroclastic deposits Mount St. Helens, Rainier, Mount Shasta, and Mount Hood Are composites found on the west coast of the U.S. for good Shield volcanoes are built almost entirely of fluid lava flows building gentle slopes. Now you see lava pours in all directions from a central summit or group of vents forming a domical shape that looks like a shield from these eruptive events. These shield volcanoes are much wider than they are tall. Mauna Loa of Hawaii is one of the most famous of them all. A lava dome is a circular shape protrusion with highly viscous lava that accumulates around the vent on its run. Lava domes are typically thick and they are steep-sided, you see. Their diameter can range
range from a few meters to many kilometers, you'll agree. Lassen Volcanic National Park contains multiple lava domes. Northern California is where these lava domes do call home. These are four classic types of earth volcanoes. Let this knowledge flow while your mind is blown. If you want to know where to go, a compass will guide you. Let's see how it works before this song is through. A compass has a magnet, it's the arrow that you see. It points north and south, but how can this be? The Earth's poles are magnetically charged due to the iron core. It's a magnet that is large. The North Pole's charge is positive, while the South Pole's charge is negative. They're equal and balanced just like every other magnet. Two magnets will try to attach to each other. The positive and negative sides will go together. Just like jelly and peanut butter or puzzle pieces do. They naturally go together connecting the two. That's why the head of the compass arrow has a negative charge. I say always pulling towards the North Pole, the biggest positive charge at play. Because a compass arrow is a needle standing free, it can move in any direction as you can plainly see. So no matter where you are, you can always find North. Even when there's no stars, so your adventures can move forth. If you want to know where to go, a compass will guide you. Let's see how it works before this song is through. Thanks for watching KLT! Please subscribe to this channel, like our videos, and check out the KLT merch store!